Let's start with the BBC News, read today by Jim Lee. The head of an inquiry into the infection through blood transfusions of thousands of NHS patients with HIV or hepatitis C has recommended that survivors should be offered initial compensation payments of £100,000 each. More than 4,000 people who were infected during the 1970s and 80s will benefit if the government accepts the recommendation. Groups representing the victims say this announcement is a major step forward. Sir Brian Langstaff, who's chairing the public inquiry into the scandal, explained his conclusion. Sir Robert Francis QC recommended interim payments because the payment of full compensation could not be delivered quickly. He made a compelling case that interim payments are needed now to alleviate further suffering. And I agree with him. And I'm obliged to recognise that the practical way to make payments swiftly is to do so through the current infected blood support schemes. Thousands of people contracted HIV or hepatitis C in the 1970s and 1980s after being given contaminated blood products and transfusions on the NHS. Thousands have died as a result. A public inquiry was launched in April 2019, chaired by the former judge, Sir Brian Langstaff, to investigate the scandal. Over the years, the government has put in place a number of schemes offering victims financial support without any admission of liability. But unlike in the Republic of Ireland and some other countries, compensation has never been paid to individuals or families affected. Well, now, Sir Brian says that individuals who currently qualify for financial support, including some bereaved partners of those killed, should also be offered interim compensation of £100,000 each. Under the first formal recommendation made by his inquiry, surviving victims and some partners of those who've died would be eligible for the payment. The idea would be to fund immediate bills and care needs with final recommendations on compensation expected when the inquiry concludes next year. Now, the government told us it welcomes those um, interim reports from Sir Brian and will be responding as soon as possible. Neil Weller was infected with hepatitis C as a result of being given factor eight as a child. Just before we came on air, he told us what he made of the latest developments. We've been holding on to hope now for the last 30 years. A lot better news than we were four years ago, but we can still scream from the rooftops and shout as loud as we like. And we've got two members of the Queen's Council saying that they recommend that we should have an interim payment, but unless the voices are heard, it counts for nothing. So you're not sure yet whether you will see this interim payment? Exactly that. The buck stops right with Michael Ellis. He had the report on the 14th of March and it was disclosed, made public on the 8th of June, 66 days later. And here we are on the 29th of July, 137 days after he's had it, and he still hasn't responded. So um, that's the, 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 the Minister, Michael Ellis, in the Cabinet Office. You say, um, are you still waiting on him then to give the final say on when, whether this compensation will be granted? Any say would be nice. it would be being fobbed off again. I know the Parliament has broken now for summer recess, which then probably then takes us to mid-September before anything. And it's, it's how we've had things for the last 30 years. We're waiting and waiting and waiting. So, yeah, like I said, you mentioned that we've got a recommendation from um, Sir Brian Lark's staff. If, if it doesn't get action, well, what are we all sat here reading these vast amounts of paper for if the government aren't listening? When we see that the government now telling us that it welcomes Sir Brian's interim report and will respond as soon as possible. What do you make of that? <laughs> as soon as possible. I'm sorry for my um, my unnecessary laugh there, but we've been hearing this as soon as possible for the last, like I say, five months ever since they've had the report on their desk. You have obviously talked about this before with your family and friends, but just tell me, tell the people listening to this program, how this infected blood issue has affected you personally? I was unfortunate enough, like 99% of haemophiliacs, to get hepatitis C. So I went for a course of treatment known as ribavirin and inter interferon, which was to eradic eradicate the hepatitis. 
and the treatment was more rough than hepatitis itself. It's left us with ongoing side effects that leave us unable to work. We're unable to concentrate. We get stroppy with everybody. We get stomach cramps. And nothing to do with the hepatitis, but due to the uh, treatment that you've had. And it's in one, I've lost a business. I lost my wife. She left me. So uh, the last 10 years, I've just been picking up the, treat, uh, the pieces from the treatment that I was given. What are you hoping will happen as a result of the inquiry as a whole? We're expecting it to uh, bring its full report, publish its full report next year. My immediate thoughts are it's it's, whatever they propose is going to take at least two or three years to put into place anyway. So it's not like the inquiry is going to end and suddenly there's a nice golden pot of coins at the end of it. So this interim payment is one which is just to sort of initially, if accepted by the government, to help us on our way, as it were, to get our affairs, because there's so many people that have been infected still dying. We've lost over 400 people since the inquiry started in August 2019. It, it's been it's been real hard to see it all over the last three years. And can I just ask you finally, if and you're really hoping it does come through, if this compensation money comes through soon, what difference would it make to your life? 100,000 is really only four years' wages for someone on 25,000 a year. Okay, let's gross that up, say 32,000 net tax and net insurance. So really, when I was affected, I was on our salary a lot higher than that. You know, it's not a lottery win, far from it. It's just to pad out just the cost of living. As we all know, that's going through the roof wherever you look at the moment. With fuel prices, it's not going to stretch that far. It might seem a lot on paper, but in modern times, £100,000 equates to probably to about three years, four years salary for someone that's you know has bills to pay and uh, a family to support. That's Neil Weller.